If there's one thing we've all experienced a time or two, it's a trip to the doctor's office. And for most of us, it only happens every now and then. But for Emma Faye Rudkin, it's become a routine part of her everyday life. When I was three years old, I got sick with a high fever and an infection. And so I've never known life without being deaf. You'll just take your hearing aids out for me. And so I had to learn how to speak and talk. Say ice cream. Ice cream. Being profoundly deaf means simple sounds. Say cowboy. Are foreign to Emma. As you can imagine, the silence made a three-year-old's childhood much harder than most. How would you describe your attitude at, as you were growing up? I think my attitude for sure was that it was just depressed and always- Depressed? Depressed, for sure. I was so depressed growing up. Um, I remember my first year at school, I would just swing on the swing sets by myself for hours because I just, I felt like I didn't belong and no one really took the time to like step into my world and to really know me as a person. And um, I just knew that there had to be something more and that life, I learned just early on that life wasn't fair. And I remember I would come home crying every day and my mama would just say, okay, you're allowed a pity party tonight. You can cry tonight, but then tomorrow you're gonna pick yourself back up and you're gonna carry on and you're gonna love people. Emma's parents were her rock during these hard times, but the key to her confidence came the day she sat down at a piano. I, I just longed to be like everybody else. I remember praying that God would make me normal, like I could hear. I struggled to hear conversations and I struggled to hear sound, but for some reason, like he's giving me like music. As young Emma's fingers danced along the keys, she could feel the vibrations of each note. She realized that music didn't have to be heard to be played. And despite her severe hearing loss, she began to transform her silence into rhythm and melodies. A madden bed, no heaven. If I couldn't hear myself, I don't think I would have the courage to sing in front of other people. Where does that come from? I think it comes back to the story of my mama, just constantly saying, God, pick yourself back up. But it all comes from like this sturdy place of courage. Through music, doors began to open for Emma that she never imagined possible. She started competing in the pageant circuit and in 2015 won the title of Miss San Antonio, becoming the first deaf person in history to do that. Since then, she's placed top 10 in a number of other pageants, giving her a national platform for the deaf and hard of hearing. Timothy Rudkin, San Antonio. Music didn't just give Emma a skill that opened doors in the pageant circuit. It also gave her a way to meet people at school. People like Ryan Proudfoot. In this world there is trouble, but you bring peace. Who quickly realized that although Emma can't hear, music is a language they both speak. at a UTSA football game and we just kind of formed this friendship. I played music and, and Emma plays music as well and so we kind of incorporated those two things together. Your perfect love casts it far away. Tell me about the song the two of you wrote together. So uh, it was called Love Hears. Yet I don't know we can distance, yet I know we sat down to write a song, which is about the deaf and the hearing coming together in relationship. 
the more that you listen to it, you discover it. Oh, it's not just about this deaf and hearing person. I had words in that song that I just knew um, was such a universal truth, even though it was about being deaf and about being lonely. You step down to share this Love Hears comes from the deepest roots of Emma's story and touches on the brokenness she felt growing up. But the lyrics also paint a different picture, one that speaks of embracing your differences and never being held back by an obstacle. It's something she had to learn and is now teaching others through her nonprofit organization, Aid the Silent. For some reason, I knew that I was supposed to help deaf people the rest of my life. We've done like 5Ks and the Music Fest, and I've been researching deaf education. They typically graduate with like a third or fourth reading comprehension level. And more and more sad things are coming out with sexual abuse among deaf children because the abusers know they cannot communicate. And so my heart is constantly is breaking for these kids. And there's, there's very few people fighting for them. And so the pain that I experience is constantly like catapulting me because I want them to not experience certain things that I have or to just stop with all the pain that they've been going through. There's a poem called Silent Hands. It asks, can you hear me? Hear me tell my tale? Hear me sing my song? Well, ever since she was a little girl, Emma Faye Rudkin has been asking for people to listen. And now they are. Through music, she has taken her pain and struggles and changed her tune. And now, she is singing for the entire deaf community. The goal for me is to never lose that first heart of it's loving people and, and it's making the deaf and hard of hearing finally the guest of honor. And it's that they would know this incredible love for them, that they're not stuck in these circumstances and in these broken places, that there really is hope. People always ask me if I could choose to be hearing or deaf, which one would I choose? And I, without fail, would choose to be deaf. It wasn't like that my whole life, but now it's just that I can see just the person that I am, and I wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.